Hi everyone, thanks for joining. Uh, I'm Ian. I'm an iOS and sometimes Android developer here at Bugs. Um, Bugs is a trading app for those who, who don't know Bugs. Uh, Bugs is a trading app that um, wants to make trading really accessible and um, make it in an easy way for, for beginners to, to start trading. Um, and it has uh, an educational aspect, a social aspect in it, so you have group chats and stuff like that in, inside Bugs, all related to trading. Um, and this presentation is going to be uh, a bit, uh, it's going to be about how we approach the problem of receiving real-time data in Bugs. As you, as you might know, trading um, involves re receiving uh, uh, updates as soon as possible uh, about uh, stock prices, uh, for example, but we extended this for, for a lot of other, other aspects in, in the application. Um, so it's going to be a bit of a history design exercise of how we, we went about um, designing our an architecture and, and um, dealing with all the problems that, that uh, come up. Uh, so these are some examples of, of uh, real-time data, applications receiving real-time data. Um, this is something that uh, on top left is something that Facebook recently introduced. So when you're looking at a post, uh, you see that a friend or someone is writing a comment and you see that in real time. So as you're looking at it, if someone else in the platform is you know, typing a comment, you receive that information in real time. This is um, like a typical uh, messaging application, so you s get messages as they are sent, and you get events such as someone is typing. And here, um, when you order an Uber, you get real-time um, location updates of the cars around you, and when you order the direction of your car. So that information is being tracked on the driver's side, sent to a server, and then sent to you, pushed, pushed to you uh, in real time. <coughs> Um, so a bit about the stock market. The stock market, you know, the stock market per se, is just just a concept. Is the aggregation of buyers and sellers of of stocks, and and the buy and and the the, the process of buying a stock of making a trade is facilitated by a stock exchange. Um, it's where all the buy uh, is where all the the transactions happen. Um, so for example. A company is listed on a stock on a on a stock exchange, um, for example, New York so Stock Exchange or Nasdaq, and it will for each stock it will, it will have um, uh, a, 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 it will have an S price, and then buyers will do a bids on on that price, and when there is a match, a trade is made. the 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 guy who's placing a bid he gets parts of the stock. And then the company gets the money. Um, so it's, it works as a continuous auction of, of stocks being sold to, to buyers. And the last point is the most important one. Continuously, ha continuously having the latest price information as soon as possible is, is crucial, is central um, for, for, you know, for trading since the you know, 19th century, when, when trading starting to become more and more popular since I don't know, 1870 or so, um, the late 1800s, people are starting to, it started to, to try to invent mechanism to, to get trading data uh, as quick as they can. Like this device, it was something that was um, actually used. It was invented in 1870, and it was a device that works on telegraph lines um, that would, um, Using you know Morse code, this device would translate Morse code to stock names and prices, and it would continu continuously give the prices and and the the, it's the prices for 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 the stocks in a stock ex exchange. So, what Mr. Burns is holding is uh, they called it um, ticker tape. Actually, the first one was invented by the first usable one was invented by Thomas Edison. So on the left side, it's our version of the ticker tape. When you're looking here, you're looking at a list of stocks, and you're getting quote updates on them in real time. So it's one of the first things after you sign up. 
uh, the, one of the first things you see, you see this screen and the with a list of stocks, and then the price is coming, and the you see the circles jumping around. Um, and on the right side, there's an example where we extended the fact that we already had uh, real-time events for stocks, and we extended it to all the aspects of the app. And actually, we went way further. So this, in this example, it's the home screen. And in here, you are seeing the activity in the platform. So every trade is made, in, in this case, in, in your country, or every, you know, there are, there are several other uh, things that can happen here. Um, for example, when, you, when someone follows a group, or when, I don't know, an invite happens, or someone joins because of an invite. Uh, it will be, be shown here. So this is also uh, all real time. If you look at it, this, this actually can get quite busy. You get loads of, of events you can al almost not see, but you see it animating quite, quite quickly. And like I said, we went, uh, we, 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 went, uh, we extended this, this uh, real time requirement uh, for, from stocks to the whole app. So the home feed. These are, this is part of the, the social part of the app, uh, where you have your chat groups, and all of them are, of course, updated real time with messages. And these are uh, stocks that you bought. And here, for example, you see prices. You see the, the, your profit on the, on the stock, profit or loss. Everything is changing real time. Um, this is something we have in the app that, that we call channels. It's like a broadcast. Um, we have channels with thousands of, of followers. And then when someone follows a channel, he can get messages from that channel. And the channel owners can, can actually share also stocks that they bought here. So you will get real-time updates on the messages and on the stock prices there as well. Um, here is another concept we have in the app, which is which are the battles. Um, so the battles are short-term competitions um, in which the users they compete against each other, um, and their their performance will will make the ranking change. So if you are looking at the screen, you see this guy moving from here, here, here. So everything here is is dynamic. Everything here will be updated real time. Um, of course, charts. So if you're looking at a chart screen, we are getting price updates. We'll draw the charts in real time. Everything here, um, but the price there, the, the difference between the previous day, everything here is, is uh, updated real time. And we also use the real time events in the platform to push hints for the user. So this is actually uh, quite interesting. So uh, we track the user activity, and depending on, on what he does, we can send a, ring, a hint um, as a real-time uh, data event uh, to say, hey, application, show something. And then we do something like this to let the user know how, how the, the app works and, and such. <coughs> So given this, this, these requirements of, of um, you know, real-time data taken to, to an extreme, uh, something that's really cross-cutting the app, and it's everywhere, um, how did we go about designing the application and the, the, serv and the server, you know, the system as a whole? Well, first of all, we started very simple with only the essential, only real-time uh, was what we, we saw it as, as really a must. And we started without persistency. Um, we tried to design the, the architecture in a way that we could easily add things as, as we moved. For, so for example, we started without persistency. And then I thought, yeah, maybe one day, if we need in the future, we can add persistency. And we made it in a way that we could uh, plug, com plug components into um, different architectures, such as Viper, if we ever wanted to. So first of all, how did we do server push? Um, there are a few options, of course. Raw TCP sockets, long polling, SSC or, or server sent events, which is part of the, the um, it's a new specification on, on HTTP. Uh, but we went for 
WebSocket, which, um, well, they, they are uh, a protocol on top of TCP connections and, and they are part of, of the HP specification nowadays. Um, with this, we could reuse um, the server uh, logic for web and the mobile clients. Um, the library support on the client side is pretty good. There are several libraries on, on iOS and Android. Um, nowadays, yeah. That's why the question mark, because on, when we started on Android, we had lots of issues. And especially regarding our use, our, our use cases, when you say when you start the app and we connect, and then when you put the app in the background, we disconnect. With all this, these usage patterns we have, um, many Android libraries, um, we, we had lots of issues with Android, let's say. <laughs> Uh, but when we started, Starscream didn't exist yet. Uh, it was only Socket Rocket, and it, back then it was developed by Square, if I'm not mistaken. And nowadays it's been taken over by Facebook, so Facebook is taking, uh, took over the, the, the project. Um, and it's, it's really solid, it's a really solid library. We've been using since 2014, uh, no issues there. And we have another internal project which also uses uh, real-time events, and we use Star screen because that project is, is entirely in Swift. And we wanted to try Star screen out, and it, it also seems pretty good. Um, with WebSockets, you have full duplex bi directional uh, communication, so that's, that's also important for us. And one reason why we, we, we ended up using WebSockets. Um, and you don't have to invent your own framing protocol if you, if you, if you compare WebSockets with raw sockets. I mean, it, it might, might look easy, but uh, chances are you're not going to make something more optimal than, than WebSockets. And the overhead is, is also quite small. Um, so talking about persistency, um, when we started Bugs, uh, five out of the six developers came from, from eBuddy, which was a, a Dutch messaging app. And uh, we, we had this, this experience uh, related to persistency. So persistency was, was really, uh, was quite painful as well. Especially if, if you have an app that, that you want to evolve. You, you, you know you are developing this app, you start small, and then you have to evolve, it, evolve uh, through the years. And uh, of course you have model changes, you have, um, you, you, you want to make, make more out of it, and it can be, be quite painful to, to deal with. And you have this um, migration. <laughs> so if you, if you ever try to, if you ever had issues with um, uh, data migrations, uh, you, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, it, in general, if you have a simple model, if, you're, if you don't have a lot of data, it's fine. Um, but like I said, if you are developing an app for several years, this will, this will bite you eventually. Um, yeah, and this is a funny uh, tweet I saw. Some guy, I, I hope this is a joke, I hope nobody is doing that. <laughs> um, but he's future-proofing the model. <laughs> Uh, so we, like I said, we started without persistency, and then at some point we said, yeah, uh, we can get away without. And um, the client has uh, almost no persistent state. Um, the only thing we, we save is just small things, like when you log in, we save the, the auth token and a couple of user default settings. Um, in our case, uh, it helps that trading data is highly volatile anyway. Uh, it's constantly changing, so there's not much use of, on, on having stale data. And, but there are certain features of the app that you think, yeah, maybe we could use some, some offline data. Uh, for example, the social features. Say if someone sends you a picture or sends you a message that you think it's interesting, the day after, if you had closed the app and you try to see it, you, you won't be able to because we, the way the app works, we don't know about the messages, we don't know about the chat group chats you are in. Everything is, is fetched by, by the application as you, 
as you run. So um, if you are in the train, you, you, you just won't see it. Uh, but this was luckily hardly requested. Um, it, it's not that the user will, will come to you and say, hey, I want persistency. They, they don't know uh, what, what that is. But it will say, hey, I want my chats in the, in the train. That maybe happens a couple of times, but um, it, it was never seen as a big issue. So how, how um, the application works um, in general to get the state from the server. So for most rings, we just get the latest state via a HP call. After the HP response, we start receiving real-time updates. And the real-time updates are just a small diff on the data that you already got. So for example, if you go to the, the, uh, the stocks list page, like the, the, we call it the products page, um, if you go there, we first do a HP call, and we get this data, put, you know, parse it, of course, uh, put that in memory. And then from that moment on, we start receiving updates on, on that data, just small diffs, for example, for the prices. And the data is kept in memory for the lifetime of the screen. Um, about uh, the way we do real-time updates. So it's based on the publish subscribe pattern where the, we have uh, a server that has, um, that's, that's the publisher and the clients are the subscribers and the publisher has a set of topics which we call channels. Um, and the clients subscribe to those, to those topics. Um, when there's new content in a topic that the, the, the client subscribe to, the, the, this this event will just this data will just be pushed for for the for the client to it, and we call it events. So, for example, again on the the stocks uh, screen, the user goes to the stock screen, HP call after response, we get the list of stocks, and for each one we send a subscribe message, saying I'm interested in updates for uh, updates for this channel, this channel, this channel, and this channel. So from that moment on, you start receiving updates on the, on the stocks that you subscribe for. And at every change of context, for example, when you are changing strings, so uh, change, changing string, screens, so as you are navigating uh, on the app um, and you change tabs, for example, we send an uh, unsubscribe message for the previous uh, channels we were subscribed to and send uh, so the unsubscribe for the previous one and a subscribe for the new one. So depending on, on where you are in the app, you are subscribed to different uh, channels. And the way we did it is, is that we have one WebSocket connection. So um, at any point in the, uh, in the lifetime of the application, you, you have only one connection. It doesn't make a lot of sense to create multiple connections for um, different data. So, for example, if you are in a screen that has, um, I don't know, for some reason, different uh, different kind of entities that can get updated real time, um, you just subscribe for the different channels. You don't you don't create new connections, even if you navigate, you know, to other screens and, and so forth. Everything is done with one single connection and multiple subscriptions. And one thing we got for for free. Ooh. What happened? <laughs> so one thing we got for free uh, it's, is uh, better support for multiple points of presence. So for example, uh, we developed a, a watch app. Uh, so if I have my app open here on the, with the stocks list that I bought, and on the watch app, you can uh, sell the stock. You can uh, we, we call it close the position. So when you close something on the watch um, and you have the application open, the stock will just disappear immediately. Uh, and we got this for free. We didn't have to, to implement it because it's the way we, we implemented real-time events throughout the app. So we, when you get the position close event, the, the, the stock sold event, let's say we just make the, the, the stock disappear from the screen. So getting a bit more, more concrete. Um, but still, this is going to be uh, quite high level. There, there are several 
classes involved, and, and I'll, I'll just go through the, the main components of the, the application and uh, their relationships, but not all details are, are going to be here. So um, some design principles, uh, I think most of it is just um, common sense and, and basic object-oriented design, um, but uh, anyway, uh, I'm, I'm going to mention. So, um, so we have the application, the architecture is, is basically in layers. Um, the design is uh, domain uh, driven, so everything you see in the, uh, everything you, 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 you talk about in, the, in terms of trading is actually driving the, the components we, we, we design in the app. So, uh, you know, you have a common vocabulary and, and everything is, is around the, the, the domain. Um, we have single entry points for retrieving and updating data to avoid spread of mutable state. And the core components should be unit testable. I'll get into more details about this. So in what we have in the presentation, um, it's basically views, routing, view configuration. Uh, we also do uh, stuff like data transformation. So you, you transform the data from, from your uh, uh, domain model to, to, the, to, to the views. Um, we have what we call the domain controllers. Which, ha which have the business logic, caching, data consolidation, data GIFs, and the domain model itself, and the networking, where we do all the web sockets handling, HP calls, um, JSON parsing, and, and so on. So in the presentation, um, in the presentation layer, we do the presentation layer uh, uh, works um, using the, the the domain controllers. So if you look at it uh, here, presentation use the domain controllers to do stuff like getting the latest data, getting the latest states, and be notified about real time updates. Um, the data only is only accessed via this domain controller, so. You, you don't do ways around it. You, you, you have to access the data. So we have a centralized, like I mentioned, we have, you have a centralized point for, for um, data retrieval. Um, one thing that we do, it, it's um, not really related to real time, but it's just, the, 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 uh, it's just something we do a lot for, to make the view controller smaller. Um, is that the view controllers are often composed of several view controllers, so it's not uncommon to see one view controller that has, I don't know, six view controllers or so for every little piece of the application. So, so for example, instead of making um, different calls and you know orchestrating calls from from one thing to the other in the same view controller, we inject the the domain controllers in other view controllers, and they will they take care of their own part. And of course, the presentation also has collaborators. It's not done on the view controller, so we try to keep our view controller small. Um, so the view controllers also have collaborators for data conversion and view configuration. Um, and the domain controller, which is the, the center, the middle of the, the, the architecture. All the business logic is there. Um, it has collaborators to in-memory cache, data consolidation. So like I said, we do HP calls and we get GIFs on the data, but then the data needs to be consolidated into the, into the models that, that we have in memory. So we fetch the data, create models, instantiate the, the, the models, parse the data, of course, instantiate the models, and consolidate the data with the latest data that's coming through a real-time channel. Uh, that's all done by the, the domain controllers. Um, and, uh, and also provides a facility for data GIFs. So for example, as you are navigating throughout the app and you change tabs, um, we, there might be a difference between the previous data we had and the new one. Um, we have some components to also create data GIFs on the data that's in memory so you can do you know, animated table updates. Um, and the domain controller uses the network layer. Uh, the domain controller is based on the, on the observer pattern. Um, and the observers, they are protocol based. I'll, I'll show a, a, a small code example later. Um, so we have a strong contract. So the, the, you, you can clearly see the link between this 
view controller or this, this part of the presentation layer to a certain uh, domain controller. You can see it, it's implementing the, the interface. Um, most of the times, the instances will be short-lived. So it will be just the view controller lifetime, but it, it can happen that some elements of the domain controller will be alive. For example, the data storage, if, if we need to cache um, some data um, for more than one screen, it, it, it might stay alive. Um, and it does, and it has uh, weak references to the observers. So although optimally, the observers will themselves unsubscribe. So for example, uh, most of the times, the observer will be a view controller. Uh, the view controller on appear subscribes. View controller um, on disappear, uh, on will disappear or something, will, will uh, unsubscribe. And at the end, the network layer which um, handles the WebSocket connection and all the low, low level networking. And so for example, if, if you have errors, the retry logic, the messages sending and parsing, uh, the subscriptions, because like I mentioned, we have to subscribe for a channel and unsubscribe. So for that, we are sending messages through the, the WebSocket. And all that is, is in, in the network layer, of course. And the HP part, which is also quite quite straightforward. Um, can you can you guys see this? Is it readable? Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is a, this is just a, an example of a product controller. Again, like I said, uh, the, wh what we call the domain controllers are composed of several other classes. Um, but this is a, an example of one entry point that might be used by, by uh, a view controller. So it has a data store, which is the centralized point for accessing data. Um, and the, these three, they are actually private, but um, I didn't want to write, so it would make the, the font smaller. It would go set two lines. So. Um, but anyway, th uh, these are the observers. Uh, like I said, uh, they are weak references. Uh, the domain controller uses the, the network via these two. So um, this is the WebSocket connection. This is the HP service for, for this entity, in the case product. Um, and then the public methods that the view controllers will use, like update, add observer, remove observer. Uh, and then at the bottom you see the, the protocol um, for when you uh, when the the call is finished. For example, you call update, and then we'll do the HP service call, and you get a callback with this did update product. Um, and and you know that that's how we do the the, the initial HP call. And then after that, the product contour, co controller internally will subscribe for updates in the list of products that it just got. And then you get callbacks on the did update current price for a certain product. Um, so this is a sequence diagram. I don't know if people do this anymore or if this is too old school. Um, but this is basically, here is the view controller. And on, on up here, we, the view controller triggers the, the, the product controller via the add observer. And from here to here is the interaction between the product controller and the WebSocket or the HTTP client. So uh, like I mentioned, you first do an add observer update. Then the update will trigger a fetch on the HTTP client, returns the data. Then on update is called. Um, and after the data is got by the product uh, controller, the product controller will make the WebSocket subscribe to these channels. And if they are not subscribed, it will subscribe. So the, this component also has a lot of logic to prevent double subscribes and you know to prevent um, unnecessary mes messages to be sent on the on the WebSocket channel. And then after a while, um, at every quote update that this guy uh, is, is subscribed to, we'll send the quote back to the view controller. 
So this is just an overview of the components, so you have uh, an idea of, of how they, they relate. Um, for example, the market view controller has a product controller, a details view controller have, have a product controller. And like I said, these view controllers, many times they will, have, uh, they will be alive at the same time. Um, and they will have uh, one instance of the product controller, or they might even share the same instance. And then this guy will, will call this guy and will uh, talk to this guy to also get real-time updates. And in here, we have logic to prevent you know, double, double calls and double uh, uh, subscribe messages and, <coughs> and you know, that, that kind of stuff. Um, so some key takeaways we, we, we have. Um, Real-time events uh, can really help to make your app awesome. They, it makes the app more, more dynamic and, and more, more alive, so to speak. Um, web sockets are really great to implement um, real-time events. Um, I know not, not everyone can do that. Not, not, uh, not all applications can, can uh, afford to do that. Some, sometimes it is really necessary, but consider having minimal persistence on, on the client. Because uh, it's it's really just just uh, a lot of complexity that that you that you add, and uh, you know it's just a lot of complex. It's, it's another layer of complexity um, that might not be necessary. Um, and the next point is about it's sort of about the persistence as, as well. Don't start with something if it is not a must. And although everything we did worked for us, there is no recipe for success. I mean, if we um, for some reason, we start hiring hundreds of people, and we have, I don't know, 50 developers. This whole architecture might might not work. I don't know. Um, what could be better? Um, this is something I did before in all the apps to to create a separate framework for the core components. And in this app, uh, we didn't do. We said, yeah, no, we we probably won't need it. But nowadays, um, we um, I mean, we, we are hurt a bit by, uh, because we, we didn't do it in the beginning. So um, we could have separated the, the core components, the, the, the domain controllers, um, into a separate framework. That really would have uh, helped us. Um, it's not a, that hard to do. Maybe, I don't know, um, we can do it quite quick, quickly. But it's the kind of stuff that you, that you think, oh, no, I'll do that tomorrow. Then you end up never doing Um so we started with Objective C in 2014 when we started Bux, uh, and then at some point we decided to to go full Swift. And but the mix of Objective C and Swift in the core components uh, is it's quite annoying sometimes. Um, for example, we have a framework for model parsing, and it uses the the default in it for the models, and that doesn't work very well with Swift. So with Swift, you have to make properties optional that are not optional, or you have to do, um, how would you say, the implicit unwrap. And that's, that's quite annoying. Um, and w as we develop the app, and I think this is sort of normal um, when you have an app that's alive for, for a few years. As the app grew, we tried different approaches, and that made the, the app, the, the, the code base, uh, inconsistent. Um, and we could use more unit tests, even for the core components. We have a few hundreds of them, but um, still, uh, there are some components that are not tested at all. So. Uh, here are some links. Um, these are all WebSocket libraries. They, they are all good. I didn't test. I think that's Jetfire, and this one, uh, but this one, the, the last one, passes on all, all the Autobahn test suite, which is a test suite, suite intended to, um, to test uh, web sockets. And it supports more modern stuff like, like compression. I'm, I'm not sure how, how useful that would be, because the, at least for us, the messages are quite small. Uh, but for example, in, in their tests, they, they, they send a whole image in the web socket channel. Uh, well, yeah, maybe, maybe someone can find a use for it. Um, if you're planning, if you if you are thinking of um, 
trying out WebSockets, I really re recommend to have a look at Socket.io. Uh, it's an open source framework on the server side and on clients. Uh, it uses Node.js on the server, and um, it's uh, it's it's uh, really uh, it looks really good. So uh, I haven't tried, but uh, it, it looks pretty good. So you, you might might have a look at might want to have a look at it. Uh, PubNub is a cloud solution for real time events. And the last one is an open source SDK for for chat uh, applications using XMPP and Firebase on the server. And that's it. Questions? Yeah, so we, we uh, have some retry logic in place um, that use the back off algorithm. So it tries to reconnect, and then if it doesn't try, it waits a bit longer and try to reconnect, waits a bit longer, try to reconnect. Uh, and at some point, it will just um, give up and, you know. But do you do a regular, I don't know, get request to get uh, some events that you might uh, lose in the uh, yeah, we do that. Yeah, we do that. So if the connection is down, uh, in in uh, in most of the cases, the the application when you when the connection is back, the application will try to refetch again the the, the screen and 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 uh, get the data via HTTP call, and then subscribe for app sockets again. Using timestamp, right? Um, no, actually, we don't. We just replace the data. Oh, okay. Yeah, but that's uh, that's a good point. Yeah, actually, it's a bit hard process to synchronize, like yeah, the yeah. server and the client. But I guess we don't have this problem because data is sequential. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, we, in in the beginning, I was I was discussing that with the the, the CTO. In the beginning, we we even considered having versioning on on yeah. events and and the entities, but uh, we we just we just thought, yeah, it's not not worth it. Yeah. And because the data on that's so fast, so so you might get a bit. So you might get your, let's say you might get the HTTP data from the server, and you get an older event on, yep. on the socket, which could be possible, but then like, you know, less than a second later you get the next event, and it's, and so we, we decided to not implement it. If you want to do it right, you should use, let's say, versioning or something. Yeah, versioning. Uh, non, so you would actually see that your update is, is too old, you would either ignore it or refetch the, yep. uh, the state. So it so it's should be like a, I call it a, an ever increasing version. <coughs> if you either miss one, you would, would fetch again, or you, yeah. or you would just drop the message because it's too old. But, but yeah, it's. Yeah, implement a similar system just for uh, file structure. Mm. Yeah. There was another question here. Yeah. Um, the reason why you went uh, in the end of adopting a persistent suite was just the core data, some experience that was from before, the other reason. Uh, yeah, mostly, mostly that. Um, well, we, uh, like I mentioned, we had lots of uh, bad experience with with uh, data migration, and um, and the, uh, the 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 model of having uh, persistent state on the client can can make a lot more difficult to do stuff. For example, multiple mu mu to support multiple points of presence, uh, like with uh, mm -hmm. WhatsApp, for example. They they don't properly support multiple points of presence because of this this architecture they have. Did you try code data or did you just discard it? Uh, we we just didn't start with it, and as we moved, we said, yeah, no. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, I I, I know I know uh, Realm Realm looks looks a lot better, but but still. Uh, like I said, it, it's another layer of complexity. If if in your app it's it's really a must to have persistency, and and I can imagine tons of of use cases, that's, that's fine. But in in our case, at least we managed to get away with it so far. So, yeah, maybe one day we'll we'll have to implement it. But so far, we 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 are good. Oh yeah, uh, it, yeah, could be. Yeah, could be. You still have to log all transactions. 
somebody buys at a certain price, you still have to lock the transaction. Well, yeah, that's sold on the server. Yeah. Um, two questions, actually. I was wondering what do you use on the server to keep it near real time? Is the scale really big? Uh, yeah, so it's Java, and they use a lot of crazy stuff. Reactive programming. The CTO is there. I think it is. Uh, it's better to, to for him to to hip reply. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we're using actor-based framework to basically reactive. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. And what do you do on the client to keep your your viewers real time? You use something like Rx or something to. Uh, no, no. Um, yeah, RX has has some some very interesting concepts, and and we, we might look at it, but we we don't don't really use it now. Uh, so we, we just get the updates from the the domain controllers uh, as as an observer, like like uh, I showed. Mm -hmm. There's a when you get the the observer callback, we just update the views. Yeah. Just update the the views with the current state of the data. Yeah. Right. Uh, you mentioned at some point that you may have one or multiple. The same domain controller instantiated. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. In that case, how do you manage notification of the, for the, because you mentioned your networking layer manage notifications of if you, for example, subscribe to the same channel? Mm -hmm. uh, is it you implement it, this logic, or is it like it come out of the box with the library? Uh, so no, no, no. We had to implement it. Uh, um, I, I didn't want to to get into this uh, for this presentation, but we we have. Um, uh, let's say uh, it's a reference count basing system. So as as you add observers on a on a channel, we let's say increment a counter sort of, and then we we and when a channel has no uh, observers, we just do send an unsubscribe message. So it, everything is centralized on the network layer. Uh, so the, the the domain controllers don't have to worry about it. Uh, you talked about sending divs. That implies that you have a previous date or a timestamp or a note. If you just told me you don't have timestamps, no. so how do you do diffs then? Yeah, no, the the we we assume that the diff is correct. So um, so that's the thing. We get the the data from a HP call. It's a diff compared to what? Compared to the HP call. Right. Yeah, well, like uh, we we like you mentioned. It can it can happen that we we miss a few versions or maybe even that the events that we start getting are from a bit before of the the HP call. It can happen. It's an asynchronous system, um, but we just decided to to go with it. it, it because of, of of the way trading is made, it, it, it it's not really. I mean, uh, we we didn't didn't see that as a as an issue so far. People are stressed anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and uh, well, the yeah, the the problem corrects itself itself eventually. M maybe you get one uh, event or, or two that, that that are wrong. It can happen, but um, and and they are diffs in the sense that also there is just a small portion of the data that's that's getting uh, updated. So it's a diff always against the HTTP call. Yeah. So the diff over time gets bigger. Then uh, we only get. No, no, yeah. So the diff is incremental. So we get one price, yeah, right. apply the, pr and then we apply that price to the in-memory model. Get the set next price, apply that to the in-memory model, and then, and then it moves on. Yes. So on the server, we let's say do event sourcing, right? So all the right. events that build up the model on the server, once they they fetch to the current model, they they then subscribe to the events that, that the server also gets. So the server also updates the model. And the client, and then when the client is online, it also takes the same model basically. Then when the client goes offline, it comes back, it fetches the latest model, and then subscribes. To yeah, so you get the HTTP call with the initial state, and yep. from then on, you get all the events on the server get also gets. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so now events on the price is like plus two cents or minus two cents, but a new price. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. So I should get really out of the. Yeah, I <laughs> know, yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then we do these these calculations on the client side. Yeah. The and does the, the chat feature work uh, in the same way? Yeah. So that's also based on events. Yeah. Yeah. yeah ev everything. In theory, it could be that. I'm in theory, it. yeah, yeah. In theory, yeah, it can happen. But only for that time. So when you switch to another exactly. channel, you come back, you fetch yeah. the state, and everything again. Yeah. So it's yeah. on the server yeah. side. We need to make sure it's, it, it works. Yeah. On yeah. the client side, it's we can be a little bit it's more. Best effort. effort. Yeah. 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 Yeah, well yeah, it's, that's it's true. It's a lot of complexity to, to do it right on the client side. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I mean, I just. 
at least we think it's not not worth it very, to very go that way. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. Sure I occasionally get a bug report like that, and then it's not a message, but then I, I got back and forth, and then it was there again. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it can happen. That's a choice. No, yeah, yeah, that's a choice. Any more questions? Yeah. So you mentioned something about clo closing the position. Uh, the user can cl uh, close the position from his uh, Apple Watch or something. Yeah. So uh, let's say the connection was a little bit slow or something, <coughs> and he decides to close that position. And the price he sees is 100, for example. And then when he sends that to the server, due to the l uh, low bandwidth or something, it took time, but the price changed at that time. What happens there? No, yeah, the, the user will close the, p the position on, on the market price. Yeah. So there might be a difference between the price he's seen, he seen, he last seen, and the price that was actually sold for. Yeah, that can happen. So when he says it's closed, it's closed, even if it's changed. Uh, sorry? When he closes the position, it's closed, even if, it, if the price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you should read the terms of information. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it can happen. So, okay. You don't take the, the price from the client, you take the price from the server. Not yeah, the, the server is the truth. So in, in it, this is actually, this is actually just, just a fact from, from, from trading. To do it 100% right, I don't want to even think about it. <laughs> <laughs> to do it really, really right. Yeah, no. I've seen the price that the user lost, so it's even different. Yeah. yeah. So if people have more questions, you will just raise things on the YouTube. Yeah. Okay, let's have a quick break.